I work with the Department of Health and their security administration team. Uh, I actually am kind of like the security awareness evangelist. I'm the one who gets to tell everybody, hey, cybersecurity, it's fun. Um, I've been leading a presentation on Wi-Fi, the unfriendly skies. It's going to be a pretty high level presentation. Um, I can take questions at the end, but I am by no means a Wi-Fi guru, so, uh, all right, so, a little bit of background on Wi-Fi. It actually started in Hawaii. I didn't know this until I started prepping for this presentation. Uh, apparently, it was developed back in 1969. I'm assuming it was a way for them to get transmissions between the islands. Um, it's part of the 802.11 pro uh, protocol. That has actually been updated and continues to be updated. It started off with, I believe, A, then B, then for me it was A, G, B, and then N, and now we have A, C. Most Wi-Fi runs either on the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz spectrum. Uh, 5 is a lot faster. 5 will get you more throughput, but it is not as good as going through things. So the further away you are from your access point, the slower you're going to actually get. Uh, 2.4 is better at going through things, but not as fast. Um, even though we've updated, and I believe currently they're working on the latest protocol, which is WPA3, uh, because WPA2, which is the current Wi-Fi protocol, has already been compromised by a uh, attack called Crack. Okay. Um, so you can't see it, but it's all around us. If you actually were to pick up a tool called Wireshark and start running it in here, you'd probably pick up a whole bunch of stuff. Um, it's everywhere. Uh, nobody notices it. I don't know if you've ever gone to the grocery store or something like that, or Walmart, and you see these little electronic thingies that are there. Those things are actually beaconing out to your phone. A lot of times you're like sending information to and from these different electronic advertisements. That's how they know what you're interested in and what you can buy. Um, the spectrum goes all the way from the VLF to the EHF. And you can see that different devices run on different frequencies. Uh, like I said, Wi-Fi runs at about two all the way to the top. So it would be somewhere, I don't have a pointer on this thing, somewhere over here in that area. Uh, Wi-Fi networks are meant to be shared. They're actually meant to allow people to join into the same network so they can communicate between devices. This makes it extremely convenient for us, but it also makes it very easy for people who would like to get information they're not supposed to have access to, to get access to it. Uh, the key would be to make sure that you secure your network. So the way that we currently secure our network is we use a shared key, which is your password, and encryption. And that actually is not enough these days. Even if you're using a strong password and you have encryption, you should probably also be using a VPN. If you do not know what a VPN is, look it up. It's your friend. Um, it's a virtual private network. It allows for you to create a encrypted tunnel between yourself and whatever is on the other end that you're communicating with. Um, you'll see this little guy right here in the middle. Little hacker dude. Black hat. Uh, that's the man in the middle. So this person has put themselves between you and where you're going. So everything that you send via Wi-Fi is potentially being captured. No news, news there. Um, so these are some of the tools that you can use if you're doing pen testing or if you're doing different uh, security tests on a Wi-Fi network. You can actually see these devices. They're called Wi-Fi pineapples. We have one, the Wi-Fi Nano. And what it does is it sets up a rogue access point, which can mimic any other access point that is on or is in the facility. Say I wanted somebody to connect to my network and I wanted to call it guest FSU. So everybody connects to the guest FSU, thinking that they're connecting to FSU's network, when in fact they're connecting to my network. And so when they log in and they enter the credentials to whatever websites they're going to, they transfer information, I get to see all that traffic. 
Um, a lot of a lot of would be bad actors, they go to coffee shops and they kind of pull this kind of stuff where they sit and they, you know, sniff traffic. Actually, most coffee shops have open networks where they give you the password, but airports, for example, things like that. Um, there are various different types of Wi-Fi connectivity. Bluetooth is one that's been developed over the last decade or two, decade, I guess. Um, it works on the five. Uh, the different spectrum. It's usually, it was for near communications. It started off as something that was only supposed to be three feet, maybe to ten feet. They've actually bumped it up with the newer protocols of over four, I think we're at four point, we might be at it, but four point one for most. Uh, it's thirty feet sometimes for Bluetooth. Uh, the near frequency, I don't know if you guys have ever gone into a store and used your credit card and just tap something. Uh, that's the near frequency. It essentially allows for a device to communicate wirelessly with another device by either close contact or direct contact. Uh, gas stations are using this now. Um, there was actually an article about gas station skimmers and the different vulnerabilities that exist there. Um, if you're not using your Bluetooth, even if you have Bluetooth in your car, even if you have Wi-Fi in your car, turn it off when you're not using it. You don't want to be advertising your phone when you don't need to. Um, I know that's inconvenient, but it's the best way to go. I don't know if you've ever heard of something called uh, Blueborn, but Blueborn was an attack that was leveraged against Bluetooth. It was very effective, still is effective in a lot of cases. Um, so, and yeah, the tracking part is usually because your device is constantly communicating with everything around you, like if you're walking through a store, walking through the airport, it's kind of checking you in as you go along. And so it's pinging different devices, pinging the tower, uh, and it allows you to be tracked essentially as it's on. Um, now I think we're at the point where we're going to do a couple demos, and I'm going to show you a few of the tools that are available for network monitoring, network discovery, uh, we're going to use a tool called Fern, which is something that you can use to crack a wireless network. Um, and Blue Hydra is kind of similar to Wireshark in that it monitors the traffic, allows you to see who's actually connecting to the network. Uh, Net Discover, this one is also like a uh, similar to Wireshark. Uh, so it, for you guys who don't know what an ARP is, an ARP essentially is kind of an advertisement that the device gives off in order for you to know where, where it's supposed to send the information. So it stands for Adverse Resolution Protocol. Um, this is what you're, what you're seeing right here. Oops, sorry. What you're seeing right here is the IP address on the internal network. These are all internal IPs. These are the MAC addresses. This tells you what kind of device it is. Uh, FERM is the tool that we we'll use to crack the Wi-Fi network. Um, it's pretty much click and go. Uh, you go in, you click on, you set it up here to the wireless, your wireless card that you want to use, and then you click on this, and it will populate all the different Wi-Fi uh, access points that are in the area. And once it's populated those, you go to a different screen. I'll show you this later. And it allows you to try to launch different types of attack. You can do a dictionary attack, which uses a list of known passwords that have been dumped to the web to try to see if maybe this is using one of those passwords. Or it also can try to brute force it. Um, Blue Hydra is the other tool that we'll be looking at. Um, it's for Bluetooth and it's Pony Express D. Uh, I guess, are the people who have um, developed this tool. It's, I've only used it twice testing this out, and it's pretty effective. I mean, it picks up, it picks up a couple things in my friend's apartment that I couldn't even figure out what they were. I was like, what is this? Where's it come from? Um, so it'd be pretty good to see that. And as I mentioned earlier, turn off all unneeded services. Uh, if you can, I'll use a VPN. So really the VPN providers are super cheap. Um, you can get Nord or private internet access or 
a number of different ones, and this is the ones I'm familiar with, I'm not advocating that you use those in particular, but um, I think they're for less than six bucks a month or something like that. And you can get it for a year for under fifty dollars for a lot of these things. Um, there's also there's also Tor, which a lot of um, hackers use and other security professionals use. Tor can be somewhat problematic, I will let you know that. Um, there are some issues with Tor uh, as far as privacy concerns, so putting that out there. Um, obviously the strongest uh, protocol available currently, our strongest protocol is WPA2. Uh, like I said, we're working on three. I expect that three should be coming around sometime soon. I don't really know when it's going to be released to the public. And then strong passwords. And a strong password at this point would be anything over, I'd say 15 digits. 16 for sure. 15 digits is probably a safe marker. Um, you don't have to even really use many levels of complexity. If you use a passphrase, you can get just as much security. Uh, the length of the password at this point is what is being said is important. And that will be that uh, for the presentation part of it. And then I'll move into the demo. And I think Kevin's going to assist me on that. or Because we need somebody to connect to I can bump you off. Yeah. Bear with me while I try to set this up. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do blue hydro first. So this isn't showing any Bluetooth. Oh, there we go. So you can see it's populating all these different devices here. It's giving you the version, the MAC addresses. Looks like we've got a couple of Apple, Microsoft, Samsung. <laughs> I can see you. All right. Um, so I'm on the phone. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm going ahead and selecting the YLAN NIC card, and then I click Scan. Now I'm going to look at the Wi-Fi network that is detected. So the Wi-Fi network that this router is putting out is called Vulnerable. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to go ahead and try to attack the Wi-Fi network. So we have done this test before, so it's telling me that I already have a key, I think. So it has to go wipe that out. I thought we wiped that out. You can do the police, do not act me. That's the one we have up in the building in the back. Well, I think we were trying to keep it pretty quick. I don't know how long it takes to crack that one. Does it? I mean, our password is pretty ridiculous, so. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Is it going? Uh, probing. <coughs> it's not. It's not going. Oh, it will be in the dictionary. It's not. It, well, it's not in the dictionary file, but you could brute force it. If <laughs> it's top.
So there you go. So it said that it cracked two keys. And it's showing what the password is right there. Three keys. Wait a second. <laughs> Hold on. So it's moving along to different ones because I automated it. That's what happened. Uh, it's going to different ones and actually cracking them as it goes along. <laughs> Yay. Um. All right, fine. <laughs> Oops. All right, so. Yeah. All right, so then at this point, it's given me the passkey for the lower level, which was that password, one, two, three, four, five. And it's trying to de-authenticate this MAC address right here. Uh, is that you? Or is that the router? I think that's the router. So I can't remember, were we actually going to bump you off the net, or did... I think that was like, oh yeah, it's Because that's pretty much how it works. Yeah, this one. I'm off. Let me off the network. It bumps everybody off the network. So, pretty, so pretty much the, what this is supposed to be showing is that we launch an attack against this in order to try to get something that's on the network to de-authenticate. When something that's on the network de-authenticates, it has to re-authenticate to the network. It immediately tries to hop back on. When it immediately tries to hop back on, it sends a handshake over to the router. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to grab that handshake so that I can see and I can go, okay, now I know, and I can crack it because I have a dictionary and it has that hash. Now I have a password to the router. So that's pretty much how that demonstration shows that if you have a weak password, and somebody has a tool nearby, they may be able to get into your Wi-Fi router. And I think Net Discover was the last one we're going to do. And so this is supposed to go ahead and populate. Oh, wait, never mind, because I actually have to go back and restart my network card. Anybody know the CLI for restart and network card? Service. <laughs> I think it's network manager. I don't remember. What about uh, IF? I'll just do it the non fancy way. Or not. Okay. How the heck do I get it to start back up? Nick, I know you know those. CLI for how to restart my network card.
surface and space, plate and light and status, plate and all. No, 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 yep, plate and all. And then see what the network service is called. Oh, what do I do? Ah. Do more. There it is, network manager. Network, just uh, networking, just stop it and start it. Okay. So do so service, networking, restart. Thank you. Sorry about that. I get nervous and forget things. All right. All right. So what this should do is actually show us um, devices that are on the network. Are you off? Yeah. Oh. Am I actually started back up? I did that one before though. Yeah. And then it didn't give me anything. East? Oh. Hallelujah. Sorry about that. <coughs> Yay. Okay. And there is everybody. And that's it. Thanks for bearing with me stumbling through the deal. Thank you.